Today's events are the fulfillment of a wish. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Tonight, that wall has all but vanished, and freedom's light is shining. Дайте завершити. Государство, при поддержке и при непосредственном участии посольства Соединенных Штатов Америки. Гражданской войны на Украине. What's required is a transatlantic renaissance. A new burst of energy. Finishing the work of a Europe whole, free, and at peace. Play that out for us a little bit. 25 years after the fall of the Berlin Wall, we're not finished. But if you want a really good arms race, then Russia's the right one to do it with. <laughs> we couldn't be bothered to provide the Ukrainians with some weaponry. Siesta me. Mira me. That is the least that we ought to be able to do. Why is it that everything the other side says is propaganda while we call what we say information? He warned us that Putin's government is using its control over Russian language media to mislead the public. In fact, the propaganda bullhorn that is the state-sponsored Russia Today program. Yeah, of course you can't trust the mainstream media's coverage in the West. It's very one-sided, however. This is the Cold War. The Cold War has begun again. I'm proud to be an American, and that is why, after this newscast, I'm resigning. Well, what happened next was fascinating. RT is not about the truth. It's about promoting uh, a Putinist agenda, and I can tell you firsthand. Foreign policy initiative had somehow known about her resignation hours prior to when it happened. Foreign Policy Initiative. The old neocon think tank was called the Project for a New American Century. The new one is the Foreign Policy Initiative. I'm just not used to seeing cats on the set. By the way, why are you being so weird? Dan, why are you so strange? Sending large amounts of weapons to Ukraine could perhaps uh, instigate a, a much worse situation with Russia. Suddenly, the West was galvanized. There's always this backstory that people don't know about. Where are the centers of power for making U.S. foreign policy? Because it seems to me it's, it's not just the president. Vladimir Putin cares about hard power. This is not Rocky IV, believe me. The war on terror was paranoia. The triumph of the West and the downfall of communism was hubris. Are you in the administration really prepared to push this thing all the way to the military confrontation with Russia. And it could be here. Nobody's talking about putting troops on the ground. Possibly deploying ground troops. That should not be rolled out to Ukraine. You have to prove that you are also willing to fight them on the ground and defeat them. It's a scene reminiscent of the Cold War. U.S. troops landing in Eastern Europe. An incredibly heavy agenda. Let me share with you a vision of the future which offers hope against Vladimir Putin's Russian military aggression is about to get harder. To our 25-year effort for a Europe whole, free, and at peace. There is something of a bipartisan foreign policy tradition in the United States. Uh, do you know the president? Have you met him? Uh, I have. I've been in uh, two or three meetings with him. What is this? I mean, seriously, the last time the neoconservatives had influence and real power would have probably been the end of the first George W. Bush term. Thank you all so much for coming. Thanks, Senator Cruz, for joining us. Senator Rubio, welcome. A little bit, but very quiet. Uh, if you could both, on the one hand, uh, lay out for us. I don't know, Mr. Corbyn. I've, I've had conversations. Yeah. Cannot recommend highly enough. Nothing is true, and everything is possible. <laughs>